God's heart. Oh God, you fill the emptiness within. You are our home in times of despair. We boldly
How many of you can boldly declare that he makes you whole? You are hope in times of despair. But the beauty is the Lord makes us whole. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, celebrate him right there. Make us whole. Thank you, Lord. 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 For that witness that you make us whole. All we need we find in you. Welcome to Dove Church. We're here celebrating the Lord Jesus Christ and we thank you for looking in on us and we bless you and each week we try to come with a song and a word in due season and so we bless you today during this holiday this Christmas season that you place Jesus at the center of everything that you do don't worry about anything else place Jesus at the center of it he is it he's the center of He's the center of your joy and your contentment. Everything you need, you find in him. It was Watchman Nee said that Jesus is the sum total of all spiritual things. He is everything that God wants him to be for you. He is God's everything. Jesus is. So welcome and we thank you. And with that, we're ready for the word. You ready for the word? Everybody with your Bibles in your hand. Repeating after me with good voices today, please. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. 
Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you and we pray, God, that you would put us in our best mind for preaching and teaching, for celebrating who you are. Holy Spirit, take us into the mind of God. Cause those things to come out that transform and change and rearrange. Bring correction, bring hope, exhibit your love. And so now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. Amen. Today, we're going to deal with another symbol of the season. And today's symbol, and I know this has been a little unusual, is, is, is shepherds. Shepherds. We're going to cover it. And forgive, Pastor, if we just kind of bump along. We got a little ground to cover. And we want to make sure we give you the full measure. Amen? Amen. Give you everything. And I want to start by, by saying everything God did through time was connected to something else God did. The reason why we can make the statement that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever is because he keeps a straight line in what he operates in. If he says it in the Old Testament, it manifests in the New Testament. So it's a say, 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 say. A say, 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 say. So because the year changed didn't mean that God stopped saying what he said, said, said. He's consistent. Everybody say consistent. And if there's anything that causes disruption in the world today is inconsistencies. The ups and the down, the back and the forth, the, 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 the uncertainty. But God is consistent. How many of you know him for being consistent? There is a word that we, we use for God that is really truth always. He's always the same. He's always there. Even if we question, is he there? He's always there. And he doesn't get mad when you question where he's at. He said, they'll figure it out that I'm here. And I never left. God travels old familiar paths. Bread showed how down through time God provided sustenance for earth, especially for his people. This caused their natural and spiritual life to continue. Then finally showing up as Jesus as the bread of life. All of it was done to show who Jesus was. This was a familiar path. And, and then... The next one I gave you was joy. The symbol of joy. Joy caused by what God showed the prophets in the Old Testament. What he would do in sending Christ into the world was a, a familiar path. They got happy at what God showed them. And heralded down through time. For unto us a child is born. 
Unto us a son is given. They didn't say that, you know, for unto us a child is born. They screamed it once the revelation was given to them. Once the prophetic word hit their heart, they said, it's getting ready to happen. The excitement and the joy hit the earth. But it wasn't going to hit the earth like the joy of the fact of knowing that he's here. And for us, he came and he's on his way back. That's a familiar path. Well, into our lesson today, Luke, second chapter, verses 15 through 20, NASB 95. And it says there, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. Let me stop right there because you say, what thing was made known to us? They told him that, 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 that Jesus had been born in the city of David, which was Bethlehem. Amen. And, 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 and when, they, when the angels stopped singing and talking, that angel stopped singing and, and the, the, stop, the singing had gone on. Then, then they stopped. Then they said, let's go see this thing that they said has happened. This is where the story picks up. So they came in a hurry. Somebody say, in a hurry. In a hurry. See. Can God show you something that you will get in a hurry about? I think when you deal with the Lord, it puts some hurry in you. You want to be blessed, so you in a hurry. I got to be in worship, so I'm in a hurry. Some things ought to put a hurry in you. Oh, that's not the message, God, but that, that one word, hurry. Turn to somebody and say, hurry up. <laughs> I spoke to your mornings. Hurry up. And found their way to Mary. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about the cry. When they got there, they said, we were told. That this happened. So not only were they told. They became witnesses. And because they became witnesses. It says. And all who heard it. Wondered at the things which were told them. By the shepherd. And after they heard it. The shepherds preached. What they had been told was coming. Was here that they saw for themselves, then they went on and they preached. They were the first ones to preach the gospel. That what the prophets had told us is here now. And somebody from out of this world told me that he was in the world. See, because some of y'all can't hear it unless it comes from out of the world. He's got to bother you in your sleep. Because you think everything comes from the world. But this came from out of this world to bless the world so that the world would be saved through him. I thank God for angels. And that he's given them charge over us. And then when you get good news, you don't just, okay, 
Okay, that's good. Been there, done that. The shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and just, had, just as had been told them. You know when you get happy, when God tells you something, And it shows up. Some of you didn't even say amen. Maybe that's not happening for you. Maybe you ought to live in a different reality so it can happen for you. So you trust him enough that when it shows up, you said, but you told me you would do it. Didn't I tell you that I was a way maker? Did I not tell you I, I, I'm, I'm a problem, sir. I'm a burden bearer. Yeah. Did I not tell you that I, 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 I'm the anointed one and I break yoke? Did I not tell you that I give you a peace not as the world give to you, give I to thee? Did I not tell you? And when you get it, don't act like, oh, okay, I'm good. No, you start glorifying God. Because it was what you said. Somebody holler, did I not tell you? Jesus Christ. You're sitting there, I don't know what you're sitting there looking at me for. Like God has told you something. Did I not tell you? <laughs> that I'll make a way in the desert. <laughs> what did he tell you? Did he, did he tell anybody anything? I got messed up for a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> Be careful. Somebody said, I, I just heard them. They, they didn't intend for me to hear them, but they, on the end of that, did I not tell you? They said, they just said, I am that I am. And just because she said that, you put your own end to the suffix onto that prefix. Did I not tell you? And you add something there. Open your mouth. I, it's a command. My goodness. Gracious God. Ancient Israelites were a pastoral people and there were many shepherds among them. Many biblical figures were shepherds among them. The patriarchs Abraham and Jacob. The 12 tribes were shepherds. They handled sheep. Moses was a shepherd. King David was a shepherd. And Amos was a shepherd. Isn't that amazing? That God down through time sent shepherds. For several reasons. For the immediate need of taking care of sheep and what they were bring to the economy and to people being able to live. But it was also to point the way to what would be the ultimate shepherd that would show up. God follows old familiar paths. Even to bring something new. 
Because this shepherd was going to be like no other shepherd. <laughs> okay, y'all stay regular. Don't, don't act up. <laughs> so today I'm glad I'm a shepherd. Handling sheep. <laughs> I could talk about sheep, but that's not the message today. It's about shepherds. I could talk about why the shepherd has to have a staff with a hook on one end. I could talk about why the shepherd needs to have some oil yes. to keep bugs out your head. Yes. Because I'm a shepherd. Yes. The idea of shepherd encompasses God's care for his people. And, and it comes to, at a point that you need a shepherd because men have the tendency of putting themselves in dangerous ways. And their inability to guide and take care of themselves apart from direct power and leading of God is reinforced in the idea of a shepherd. You need a shepherd. And the shepherd needs a shepherd. You need somebody over you. That's why somebody says, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a pastor. We, you know, I, I, I learn of the Lord and, and God teaches me himself. Okay. But let's me, let me move on, cause cause I, I I could preach this one for the next until New Year's. <laughs> cause every time I look down, I see something else. Two words already have taken me off track. The birth of the Lamb. I'm going to give subheadings along the way and, 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 and lay it out. And then, then we, we are going under the birth of the lamb. On a hill about six miles south of Jerusalem lay an area, a town called Bethlehem. It was there on those hills, sheep grazed. Shepherds kept watch and the newborn lambs were chosen and set apart. They were chosen and set apart. I had mentioned earlier in the earlier message how the, 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 the sheep from Bethlehem were prized. They were set apart. They were special. Woo. Anything born in Bethlehem <laughs> had special designation. David was born there. Rachel wept over her children there. And until Jesus showed up, lambs were born on the pastures around Bethlehem. These distinct lambs born in Bethlehem were predestined to be offered as a Passover sacrifice at the temple. In a manner of speaking, they were royal lambs. Hand-picked. Approved for the task. Only a privileged few would have. Now, it was only a privileged few of the lambs that would be offered as sacrifice. Not every one of them. Because if a lamb showed up with a spot, it was not qualified. 
if the hair texture wasn't right, it was disqualified. If the hoof wasn't right, it was disqualified. Oh, y'all think... It is by coincidence or no coincidence that Jesus, the Lamb of God, was also born in the same town as the sacrificial lamb. This is what Micah told us. (laughs) Just as the lamb born on the hills of Bethlehem were predestined to be offered as a sacrifice, so was this important lamb. He was destined to be Sacrificed. Let me go back to say the royal lambs were handpicked and approved by their shepherds, were symbolic of the royal lamb of God who was chosen by the Father, approved as the only one worthy to give his life to save the world. And those lambs were the only one worthy born in Bethlehem, around Bethlehem. The, 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 the special ones were only, they were the only ones worthy to be sacrificed. Yeah. Yeah. That's why there are not many Jesuses. There was only one that was worthy. Because he was without spot. (laughs) So look at God traveling all familiar paths. Doing what he always does. The way he always did it. The only way he can. I read an interesting story of how a poisonous snake, this is for real, had bitten the lamb on its nose. The amazing thing is that the lamb did not swell and die. It did not. Everybody say did not. The fact is the lamb did swell. But it didn't die. This was a poisonous snake that would take men down in a matter of minutes. But the lamb didn't die. He swole up, but he kept eating. And he kept walking around. And he kept dying. Isn't that a message for when you get hit by the devil? (laughs) You tore up a little bit, but keep eating. (laughs) Keep walking around. And keep praising. Bye. Praise you, God. Bye. Thank you, God. Bye. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, you've been hit, but bye. <laughs> Get silly with me and say that with me. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Let me tell the rest of the story. (laughs) The lamb did not die but returned to normal after a while. Then it was discovered that the lamb's blood was so pure. (laughs) 
that it rallied against the poison in his body. So on the outside, he kept moving, but on the inside, the blood, the blood was fighting the intruder. And the blood of the lamb won. Today, lamb's blood is a key ingredient in anti-venom for snake bites. And I want to tell y'all. <laughs> and the blood still works. <laughs> oh, you don't have to get happy about nothing today. I'm already, I'm going to be happy for you. <laughs> It still works. Anybody been bitten? <laughs> Anybody been through anything? I dare you to turn some blood on it. And start a battle. You, you, you may swell up a little bit. <laughs> But you're going to win. Colossians 2, 14 and 15 shares this with us. This is how powerful that blood is. It blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, laws that were against us which were contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. You got triumph in you. He spoiled principal. What does it mean to spoil principal? You embarrassed them when they thought they had won. Jesus embarrassed the snake in the garden. And he embarrassed Satan in hell. Because what you thought you were victorious of, it walked and it got up out the grave. With all power in his hand. Come on. Put your hands together and celebrate it. You don't have no lightweight stuff working for you. You got heavy duty help. Somebody holler the blood still works. Uh, uh, See, he re he's repeating because he's, he's, he's operating in the principle. How should they hear without a preacher? Yes. 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 And the sheep know the shepherd's voice. Yes. Yes. That's when they holler, the blood still works. Yes. <laughs> Immediately following the birth of the lamb, we're back in Bethlehem again, y'all. The shepherds would meticulously look over and inspect the lambs, making sure they were flawless and without fault. The shepherd would then wrap the perfect lamb in swaddling clothes. He would wrap them up. Prized possession. This is a perfect one. After he wrapped them rascals up, he would sit them to the side because they were destined to be the sacrifice. 
They want just anybody. That's what it means to be set apart. Holy. Complete. Set apart. My God. My God. The swaddling clothes certified that the birth was holy. But in Luke 2 and 7, I found something interesting. It says, she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for him. In the end. Well that's what you do for lambs. Oh. He is the lamb. Later on his cousin. At the time that he was about to be baptized. Stood back and hollered up the mountainside. Behold the lamb of God. <laughs> Which comes to take away the sins of the world. Set apart. <laughs> Look at this. He didn't call him Jesus. He didn't call him Savior. He said, behold the Lamb. Let me go on. Y'all not even excited about this. We have a certified Holy One. Already wrapped. Already sacrificed. And he's the Lamb of God. The only one like him. They sacrificed many perfect lambs in the Old Testament. But when Jesus came, that's when sacrificing stopped. You know why? After Jesus, they couldn't find anything comparable. Nothing compared. No, I see something. <laughs> no, reject. I, you can't wrap this one up. Reject, reject. But over there on Calvary hangs one beaten, yes. tore up, yes. but he's still perfect. Yes. Bleeding, yes. but he's still perfect. Yes. Dying, yes. but he's still perfect. Yes. It was on this hill in Bethlehem that God chose to reveal his greatest message to those who sacrificed so much. You see, shepherds were steeped in the Mosaic laws, the Hebrew Bible. They knew it better than many of the common everyday folk. And the shepherds around Bethlehem were called rabbinical shepherds. Because they had great knowledge of what was required of how they needed to handle the sacrifice back to the days of Moses. So when you want to handle holy things right, you have to read about what God says about how to handle them. Like, touch not my anointed. And do my prophets, I just had to throw myself in, do my prophets no harm. Huh? You need to know how to handle You can't do them any kind of way because you, you think you got a right to. <laughs> so they had to learn how to handle what was set apart and holy. 
But here's the funny thing. Because they dealt in blood, they couldn't go worship in the temple. Now they could raise the lambs for the temple, but they couldn't go worship in the temple. So because they couldn't go worship in the temple, God said, I'm going to bring worship to them on the hillside. So when the angel showed up, he talked to the angel. He talked to those shepherds. And those shepherds got excited and went to see what what, 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 what they said had happened, that he's here. And when they saw him, they didn't say, my, 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 how much does he weigh? How big is he? Who does he look like? The Bible says that immediately a worship came out of there. In the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't just hump up into his presence. You, you worship into his presence. When he showed up, that's time to get your hands up. And get your mouth open. And, and you start blessing the Lord for everything that he's doing and everything that he's done. No, you ain't cool. You ain't down. It's time to worship. It's time to praise God because look at what God has promised us. But better still, look at what he just done. So throw your hands up and open up your mouth and worship him for what he sent into your life to set you free. To get you to a different place. Some of you still not following directions. You're looking at your phone. And I said throw them hands up. And worship him. And tell him God I see you. <laughs> I see you. And I'm glad you're here. You can preach when you worship. And after they finish worshiping in the presence of God, in the form of a baby, they went out and they preached with an anointing that said, the one that they told us was coming, then a heavenly person came and told us he's here. And I have seen him. I have seen him. Hope has come. I couldn't go to the temple, so God brought the temple to the hill. I have seen him. <laughs> Anybody seen him today? Anybody seen him today? Has he walked into your life as a baby? He's the only baby that will become a shepherd. And then after being a shepherd, he became a resurrected Lord. Marty Nystrom wrote a song. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I have made the choice to listen to your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I will go. Be it in a quiet path or by a gentle breeze. The shepherd of my soul is by my side. 
Should I face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep? The shepherd of my soul will be my God. Shepherd of my soul, I give you. If you know what's saying, well, I will follow. I have made the choice. To listen wherever you may will go. Be it in a quiet pasture. Be it in a quiet pasture. Or by a gentle stream. By a gentle The shepherd. The shepherd of my soul is by my side. Should I face a mighty mountain? Should I face a mighty mountain? Or a valley dark and deep? Valley dark and deep. The shepherd of my soul. The shepherd of my soul will be my God. Go back up to the top. Shepherd of my soul. Shepherd of my soul. I give you. Give him full control. Made a choice. I have made a choice to listen. To listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Wherever you may lead. your hands together give him a good praise come on do better than that blessing if you heard this message today blessings to you today give the Lord Jesus your life and your heart he'll come in Pray this simple prayer with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin and I give you my life. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. You are Lord of my life today. In Jesus' name. If you made that confession, we're right at 4660 Military at the corner of a ratio. Larger cross streets, Michigan and Illinois Avenue. Come see us. We'd be glad to share this word with you. Glad to shepherd you through in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. He was born as a lamb, but he became our great shepherd. Also our great Lord. He's the one that the prophet called Emmanuel. Wonderful God, mighty counselor, prince of peace. He's Jesus, and we love him. Come on, any Jesus lovers in this room, put your hands together. To all of our viewers, we are so grateful for the time that you spent with us today. We trust that this presentation was a blessing to you. We pray that it inspires you and enhances your spiritual learning. Also, we encourage your financial support of this ministry as we continue to reach the world, knowing that God will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving. And that will take you to our PayPal page. Thanks again. God bless you. And we hope to see you soon.